about Falcons and Titans. Falcons, four and three, Jeff, the leaders of the NFC, the, the NFC South. And then you have a Titans team that's really underachieved this year, in my opinion, Jeff. This team could be four and two this year. They could be three and three this year. They don't have to have a losing record, but they just haven't been able to just put together a great game, in my opinion, this year. They've been able to put together some wins, but they haven't been able to put together a great game this year. And um, let's keep it real. The Falcons are a work in progress as well, too. And the craziest thing, I say this, but Desmond Ritter is actually in the top 15 when it comes to yardage thrown. And that's pretty good because they didn't have these type of expectations for Desmond Ritter. And I didn't, I was looking at the early stats and Desmond Ritter seemed like he wasn't getting a lot of passing yards. Everything was about the run. But right now, the run, the run to me is, is the thing carrying Atlanta. Once again, they were able to get over a hundred and I think what, 30 yards or so, uh, 30 yards or, or more. And they were able to win this game. Every time they have a great running game, they win the game. And they had a good combined running game with um, Algeri, who was really good um, on Sunday. And then also Ritter was good. And Bijan Robinson didn't play that much, but he was able to be key in the final stages of the game because, you know, pretty much he's, he's that dude right now. And um, Bijan Robinson should, um, he's still to me, the key piece to this team, Jeff, it reminds me a lot of when Marshall Falk was on the Colts and on the Rams as well, too, to where if he gets off, you guys are going to win the game. And if he doesn't get off, you guys are going to have issues. And he didn't get off last game, but what happened was the defense saved him. And Baker Mayfield throwing picks, that's, that was huge for him as well, too. But they need – um Ritter to be more conscientious about holding on to the ball. He was very detrimental to their offense. Um, fumbling the ball uh, right outside the end zone, that is unconsolable, to be honest with you. So there's a lot of things that he needs to fix, but he's that good of a game manager to where you can't really say, we got to bench the guy, because there's no reason to. Because their team is set up as everybody has to do their job well for us to win the game. And that's what it is with the Falcons. The Titans, on the other hand, I feel like they really want to move off of Tannehill as the quarterback. But they don't trust the two rookie, the two young quarterbacks that they have. Malik Willis is more of a, a, a of a gadget type. More of a, a more of a backup. Tyrod Taylor's, PJ Walker's of the world, and then you got Levis, who's really a guy that's still kind of untapped potential. You don't really know what he could be. You know that they wanted him in the first round, but he didn't get drafted until the second round. But still, that's something that's an issue. They need to figure out who is their signal caller. Derrick Henry, we all know, is somewhat regressing, but he's still the key piece to the team. And I just think that if Tennessee's defense is able to step it up and play a good game, they shouldn't really have any issues with the Falcons. I know that sounds crazy, Jeff, but I truly do think that the Titans should be able to really be able to beat up on the um, Falcons because – one thing is the Titans are one of the better home teams in the NFL. And I think that them being a, a, a slight row uh, home dog is absolutely disrespectful. I know that the Falcons have the better record, but the Titans have, to me, a better coach and a better defense. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Titans with the plus 110 on the money line. And I think it's an absolute gift, brother, to be honest with you. As you were talking on the intro about this game, I was reading some uh, updated tweets. Tannehill did not practice today, and, and Mike Vrabel came out and stated uh, that both Levis and um, Willis will both be uh, playing one of those, you know, those dueling quarterbacks. 
uh, if Tannehill is out. Uh, the Tennessee has played very, very good at home. It has been a house of horrors for their travel teams. Watch the Atlanta game at length last week. Started to really get impressed with Ritter. I mean, it is a boring offense to watch because they just pound the ball, run the ball. And then, of course, use Bijan as a, a decoy who had a headache. Six, he was out on the field for six snaps and uh, never touched the ball in the first half. Um, Kyle Pitts slowly coming on. Drake London, another USC wide receiver, uh, coming on here. But again, if Tannehill doesn't play, it's going to be who wins the turnover battle. Word on the street is uh, Henry is available. You're starting to see Tajay Spears get a lot more looks. I think it will be the front seven of the Titans defense that creates a turnover or two. I think Tennessee wins the turnover battle. Look for Spears and um, Henry to control the ground game. Maybe uh, 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 if Traylon Burks plays, I don't know, a D-hop touchdown. I took the Titans. I bought the hook up to two, but I can see them winning this game. Let me see what the under-over is here, Pops, for everyone. 37. I'll go 2017 Titans, Pops. All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. And you know what? I just really I just feel like the Titans got to bounce back and this is the perfect bounce back spot for them. So that's why I think taking them today is the uh, is the best bet for you in this spot, because they just they just are overdue. And I just really feel like Atlanta is kind of playing with house money a little bit right now because they're just really average. You know what I mean? There, there's nothing really special about them at this point. Other than B. John Robinson. You know what I mean? B. John Robinson is an absolute gem. You know, but Desmond Ritter, though, those I told people when he was in the draft that he should be the first one off the board. And everybody undefeated at home, had a great record, started a lot of games in college. And it was a weak college quarterback group, and he was the best one out the group. Think about it. Kenny Pickett was good. But Desmond was really good. You know what I mean? He's a winner. Winner. The biggest stat in all the sports. Winning. Jeff, you know, let's, let's, you know, Vince Young literally lost the job because he won too much. You know what I mean? That's why Jeff Fisher's ass never should be on the sideline ever again. Vince Young is the greatest example of that. You know what I mean? It, bad coaches that you keep letting in. Thank goodness they came to their senses in Los Angeles firing him because he was going to destroy Jared Goff too. <laughs> he literally was going to, he, he was going to, de- now we know that he destroyed quarterbacks. It's that simple. Steve McNair was too good for him to destroy. So, you know, it is what it is, but all right, let's get to this Colts game. Colts saints. Oops. Colts saints. And um, this one, damn, I'm all over the place. But, um, but Colt Saints, this one is a very, very good matchup to me. Um, it's actually one that I've been kind of waiting for. You got a Saints team that's three and four. You got a Colts team.